Freedom's the answer. What's the question? You're listening to Ernest Hancock. Wanna jump right in? You can always depend on propaganda. Life is so hard, so confusing. Everyone's just trying to make ends meet. You can brighten up their day, keep the facts out of their way. Just simplify the complex. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Propaganda. 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 We don't get propaganda. you any propaganda here on Declare Your Independence. Me, Ernest Hancock, my very, 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 very special guest, Mish Shedlock. You just put in Mish, M-I-S-H, and Google, boom. Boom shakalaka. It's all over the place. And he's been telling us all about what was going to happen to the economy long time ago. Long time ago. Charles Goyette and I have been uh, referencing Mish for a long time because we needed somebody to tell us what was what fur. And he's been the man. And you see a lot of his stuff on Freedom's Phoenix as well. Now, we, when we left uh, at the end, you, you had us cliffhanging here. You know, the real problem. Now, help us out, Mish. What's the real problem? Well, the real problem is obviously the Fed. I mean, actually, there's, there's so many real problems. Where do you begin? The Fed and government spending. But the, the, the Fed thinks that it can micromanage the economy. Instead, it blows cereal bubble after cereal bubble. Each bubble is, is bigger than the next. And, and, and the policy is always asymmetric. They blow this bubble. And then um, when the bubble blows up, they try and protect the banks. So the average taxpayer is getting screwed from all these bailouts that, that benefited the banks, not them. The, uh, the, the real guy is, just gets poorer and poorer from these inflationary policies. They get hit by deflation in their assets. They're, they're falling home prices. They extend credit at the peak of the bubble to, to everyone who, you know, had no business buying a house at all. And, and now everyone's complaining. Well, they want the bailouts, too. Well, the bailouts are one-sided. They only bail out the banks. But you know, this, this whole global financial system is, is a train wreck waiting to happen. Okay. Because the banks in the U.S. are insolvent. The banks in Europe are insolvent. The banks in China are insolvent. The banks in the U.K. are insolvent. I, I think that's a lot of insolvency, don't you think? But, uh, you know, when this matters, I don't know. But we can look at the price of gold, and it keeps going up, and every dip is, is bought. And I've been recommending for, I don't know, <laughs> almost 10 years now, at least certainly seven years for people to buy gold. And uh, it's certainly been a pretty good investment. Miners have gone up and down, but gold this is pretty much going straight up. You know, when, when silver took a dump, I, I, I went, I was, I'm, I always telling everybody, you know, buy silver, buy silver, buy silver, buy silver. And when it took a dump, I go, yay, it's time to sell all my um, um, stocks and buy more silver. <laughs> so I'm going, you know, we just keep buying. Now, the thing is, is that I, I, I in the past, there's always been this ouch quit it with economists, certainly of a more freedom orientation or trying to be real about what's going on between the inflation, deflation, inflation, deflation. Explain to us what that argument is all about. And 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 when you're talking about the increase in credit, you kind of put that in the category of, you know, that's an inflation. That That's inflationary when they have credit. When they, you know, mm -hmm. retract the credit, well, they, you know, that's deflation. So, so help us understand what the argument is and what side you come down on and why. Well, that's my, that, that's my argument. And, and people misrepresent it all the time. You know, I'm a uh, pretty well-known deflationist. But if people actually read what I've been saying, uh, my, my arguments are, are all about uh, credit and credit mark to market. Now, there's $50 trillion worth of credit out there. You know, if, if you, you know, meanwhile, all the people that are looking at, you know, the, the $2 trillion or $3 trillion or whatever number you want to put on it, $5 trillion, that, that, the, that the Fed is, is, is printing or supposedly printing, uh, uh, whatever, and it's quantitative easing. I mean, that's just dwarfed by the amount of credit out there. So uh, uh, what can't be paid back won't. And we saw it in housing, and I think we're going to see it in other forms of loans. I don't think the bottom is in in commercial real estate. I don't think the bottom is in in housing. Uh, uh, and, you know, not just in the United States, but, you know, also in China, also in Europe. In fact, look at Europe. You've got all these piss-poor loans that the uh, German, French, and U.K. banks made to Greece and made to Ireland, made to Spain. That stuff's not going to be paid back. 
And, and when that's not going to be paid back, there's going to be another credit crunch. By my definition, we're going to be back in uh, 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 infl- in deflation. But how are the central banks going to react to that? They're probably going to print money, and what's going to happen? And gold's going to go up. So, you know, uh, this is why I've been the, the one deflationist, I don't know of any others, that has actually liked gold. I've been a proponent of gold. And, and, and my thesis is, is that central bankers would, would react to this credit bust by printing money, and that would be good for real money, which is gold. And that's what we've seen, you know, happening. And people distort my arguments. They, you know, Mish, you're, you know, you're a complete fool. You know, prices aren't going down, blah, 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 blah. Actually, I think they will go down again, you know, just because uh, commodity prices have, have uh, uh, soared, you know, through the roof. I, mean, I don't think there's a fundamental reason for oil to be here at, at over 100 bucks. And, I, and I don't, actually, I don't think there's a fundamental reason for silver to be at 50. I dumped and I posted real time. Uh, uh, on my blog, silver was like 48. I said I'm selling out of all my silver, and I'm tra- and I'm, I'm uh, trading it in for more gold. And I'm glad I did that post because that's one of the kinds of because I did it real time. It's like one of those things you can't come back and you know two weeks later and say, oh, I did this two weeks ago because no one believes you. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad I did that post because a number of people followed me. Uh, silver back in the 20s wouldn't surprise me. In fact, I would expect silver to, uh, to go back in the 20s. And you know what? It falls back down there to the low 20s. There'll be another good buying opportunity for silver. But uh, uh, the mistake people make is is they the, every time they think these parabolic spikes are are different that somehow the things are going to keep going up. Now, they thought that with home prices, they thought that with silver, they thought that was the stock market, they thought saw that with the Nasdaq. Every time it's a new paradigm, and every time everyone thinks it's still going to keep on going. Man, you, you know, you just have to recognize these parabolic spikes and say, man, you know, this is dangerous. You know, maybe silver could have hit 200, or excuse me, silver might have gotten to 100, but now you're playing for that last double. I mean, silver was at 5, then 10, then, you know, then 20, you know, then 40. You know, do you want to play for that one last double? I think there were a lot of people that were just a little bit too greedy on, 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 that, on that silver train. But, um, I'm not trying to make money. I'm just trying to not lose it. <laughs> you know, the- <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do too. And 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 and, and certainly those. And, and really, a, a tip of the hat here to uh, and, I, and I fought a lot with Eric Jansen. But you know, he defines uh, uh, inflation a lot differently than I do. And he, you know, he looks at prices of, of, of things. But you know, uh, Mish, way I, back in 2002 or something, he said, buy gold and hold on to it. He didn't say buy gold and silver. He didn't say buy gold miners and hold on to it. Buy the stock market. He said, buy gold and hold on to it. And, you know, my God, you know, for anyone that could do it, and it's not easy, certainly you can't do that when you're managing other people's monies unless you're specifically running, you know, a, a hedge fund or something, you know, uh, uh, tied to, to, to precious metals. But, uh, uh, you know, a, a tip of the hat here to, to Eric Jansen f- f- for that call. And we've had our battles, but mainly they've been over this, you know, definition of, you know, what is inflation and what is deflation. But you know, but Mish, if, I, I, wanted, I wanted, there's so much more we can talk about. I know we only had scheduled for the hat. Can you go another segment? I can go another segment. Let, let's go ahead and do that because there's a lot. This is a really good kind of after the heated battle of all what the Fed did and everything. Now we can relax and talk about what really has happened, going to happen, definition of deflation, inflation. According to Mish, he's going to help us out. We'll be right back.